Hey guys, Compressor House here again. Um, we're doing another video. Uh, today we're going to do a video of the uh, Cyclone kit, uh, which uses the uh, right uh, downdraft IDF carburetor. Um, so we're going to take you through uh, how to build the kit up to the point where hopefully, fingers crossed, you can get it running. Um, so I'll just show you what we've done over here. With this engine, we've just prepped it ready for uh, today's build. We've got a couple of brackets and a nut and bolt pack. Um, manifolds uh, have been removed and we've put new gaskets on. Um, and the first thing that we've done, if you just notice down here, is we fitted a silicon hose and we've tightened down this um, Jubilee clip uh, and we've left this one loose. Uh, on this side, we've removed the um, manifold altogether. You can see that we've had to remove the fuel pump and the gaskets and the spacers, the distributors out the way. And ahead of uh, filming this, we fitted the MST kit. One thing to note when you fit in the idler pulley uh, for your MST kit, there's a little bit of play backwards and forwards with um, the bolts at the rear here. So one thing you want to try and do when, you, when you're bolting those down is just pull it to, towards you and then tighten them down and that just makes sure that this idler pulley here is sort of at its most outward position. Okay, so as long as your engine is in this sort of condition you should be, uh, you should be good to go. Over here on this table we've got some of the parts that you've, you'll use. Uh, to build up your kit. So you've got your Weber carburetor. Now we've saved just a little bit of time by simply bolting the uh, manifold onto the carburetor with a base gasket. That's of course in your kit. We've modified the throttle levers on the side there. Uh, so simply done that. And so first thing to do is actually this top part of the carburetor, you can actually take that off um, you don't need that part for this build. Okay, then in here you've got your accelerator kit, you've got some springs and some adjusters, some other little brackets. So I'll just move that out of the way. You've got a um, distributor cap, your belt, you have an air filter to go on your carburetor. Um, we've also got two air horns as well. They will fit here and we'll do those later on as well. You've got a base gasket, oh, sorry, a base plate with an adjuster. And you'll see that there's a hole here. Look, this pipe, this is for your um, breather uh, kit, which you'll need to uh, fit as well to your car, but really before you, you start fitting the, uh, the supercharger kit, really. So you've got then a some pipe work. Um, now this is raw. You can see it's not been polished up. Some This particular customer has asked us not to remove or burnish your marks from the weld because it's going on a, a, a ratty bug. Uh, so that would be quite interesting to see when they've done. And of course you've got your supercharger and some gaskets. So what we'll do is we'll start the build and I'll show you how to so first of all, put your supercharger down here, find yourself a gasket. Uh, now, if you notice this gasket here, this hump is offset, so make sure you fit that in the right position. If you don't, then it'll just cause you some frustration. Okay, I'm just going to grab a couple of bolts. Give me a moment. There we go. Right. Dead simple. All you're going to do now, look, is you're going to put your manifold bolts onto the supercharger. Of course, not forgetting to fit your gasket. And 
actually. On this corner here, there is a bracket that comes in with your rattle cable kit. Grab that first. And you want to fit this bracket into the supercharger and have it facing forward. So this is Again, it's for your accelerator cable, and you want to be doing this. You want to be doing this now, not later on, because it can be quite fiddly. You've also got an adjuster for your accelerator cable. Just helps you take all the slack out of the cable later on, and then just put that through there. And just give that a little, a little nip up. There we go, that's all we need. Okay, so next step gaskets. Your base gasket wants to go onto your uh, engine. Note that radius there, so drop that on. go that's in place now we're going to fit um, the base plate so you'll note that you've got this adjuster here um, so I usually pull this put this together it will be in three parts the adjuster at the top the bottom and the rod with the bolts um, so just assemble that and then assemble it simply to the base plate like this Again, all your nuts and bolts, etc., are in your kit. So this just allows you to be able to adjust the supercharger up and down later on. Now, in most cases, you take it right down to the last thread and then just tighten it up. Um, I've done a few of these now, so pretty much every time it's it's right. But what, one of the things you'll have to do later on is is check that. But we'll explain that as we go. So now I'm going to drop on a couple of washers. And also want a couple of M8 nuts. So let's get those on. Tighten them up. There we go. Nope. Just, you just pull that forward or over there out your way. Now the next step. Um, you want to use a cloth if you can, just to protect your paintwork on your on your engine. You know, if you're just building your engine at the moment, you might uh, have just had it painted, etc. So this next step uh, is just to avoid any sort of damage or scratches, etc. A um, couple of things here. First of all, before you um, start to fit the supercharger, charger, we're going to fit some of the uh, HT leads. So let's go with number two. thread them underneath the alternator and wrap them around the back of the alternator like this just to keep them out of the way and just while we're talking alternators um, some alternators on the original stands um, with the clamps can be actually quite loose now your alternator is going to get a bit of stress on it because it's going to be pulling up, up this this direction onto the supercharger. So what I've done here is actually just taken a piece of an old belt, uh, that's probably about 100 mil in length, just taken a piece and cut it and then just fit it underneath the uh, alternator strap there and that just helps and stops the alternator from, from moving and and stressing etc 
So just a little tip there for you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the assembly we've got earlier and we're going to thread it around the back of the alternator. Well, actually, before I do that, let me just show you. These end parts of the pipe, they go inside the actual aluminium manifold, so they slot inside. So you need to make sure that you have got the 1600 manifolds. If you haven't got the 1600 manifolds, which have got a 36 mil hole, then these won't fit. So make sure you've got the right ones. So next, we've got the other manifold for the other side, look. We put the silicon hose on, we've tightened that up, and we've left this one loose. Now what we're gonna do is just swap that in, and then drop the manifold there onto the engine. And with this, look, this adjuster, just use it for the moment, just to help prop up the supercharger and now you can take the, the cloth away it's up to you you can leave it there if you need to so next step is we're going to tighten down the manifold so press that down bolts on, or nuts should I say, another one somewhere, not the last one, just grab one, down, 13mm spanner, tighten them up, there we go, okay, in fact what we want to do here is while this is uh, adjustable is we want to try and fit the belt, so you've got a 4PK1110 belt, Okay, and just wrap that around your MST kit and your pulleys and then around your idler. There you go, nice and easy. Right, next part is we're going to fit the adjuster. through there, fit the washer at the back, and the nut, if you can get it on it is a little tricky, so you might just need a little extra patience when putting that on. There we go, and just tighten that up. And just check the one at the bottom is tight, of course. Um, so it'll be kind of pre-tensioned, but you've still got enough in order to be able to tension that belt. Okay, right. So now what I want to do is you'll, you'll, you'll feel that the, the supercharger wants to pull itself back in this upright position for the moment because of the spring tension on the belt. 
So we're gonna hold that down and then tighten down the silicon hoses. Now remember with the silicon hoses, it's really important when you're, when you're fitting these to make sure that you've got the, silica, the um, Jubilee clip right over to this edge because the structural part of the manifold is right underneath it. So you don't want it over here, as an example. If you've got it in the center, then it's just not gonna fit properly and it's just gonna keep coming off. So just as a matter of course, just make sure that they're sort of right over to the, the far edge when you're tightening them up. It's one tightened up, and then do the same on this side. If you can, use a wrench and a little socket on those, I would say. Now, at this point, we've tightened those up, um, we've adjusted the bar and if you do need to adjust the bar again um, this is the, the time to do it start doing it now before you still start building it any further just do another check are your pulleys aligned is your bolts is your belt centered if it's not you need to make some more adjustments and and, and do that do that part again but that should be pretty straightforward okay so now we fitted that um, what I would say is, if you've fitted your breather kit, your crankcase breather kit, um, now is a good time to fit your hose that goes between the breather box and the base plate. So put that on, use a Jubilee clip just to tighten that up. It's really important that you use the breather kits. Um, you're putting all that extra pressure inside the crankcase. If you don't use a breather kit, it's gonna find the weakest point in your engine. All the oil will pass through uh, those seals and you'll start to see oil on the floor. And these things, they don't need any help leaking. So uh, just bear that in mind. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to fit the carburetor. So again, you've got a gasket in your kit. Um, you've got this notch here. This notch fits to this end. Okay. You've got the manifold, which we fitted early onto the carburetor earlier. So just drop one of those nuts in. And just be careful with it. There we go. Start to just drive them down with bolts. In your kit again this will be in your accelerator kit this is for your accelerator cable now you'll have one 20 millimeter m6 bolt which is five mil longer than the others you see you've got one end which is bigger than the other so that's for your accelerator cable and that's just for not and that actually fits this back end here so, put that in place. Turn that up. And when you're tightening this down, tighten it down diagonally so that you keep flange nice and flat and it doesn't distort it.
tighten it up. And it just wants to be nice and square. Okay, carburetor's fitted. Now, in your accelerator cable kit, you've got a spring. You'll see that this little bracket look here is going to be pre fitted. So, drop your spring in place. There we go. Now we've got a good spring return. And now's probably a good point your accelerator again this can be a little bit tricky uh, and may need a little bit of patience so you have your outer cable this nut on here that simply just fits there okay you can tighten that up later on cable itself I'm not going to spend time doing this because this hasn't got the other half on but what we what we recommend doing here is your old cable that you already have fitted I mean if it's in poor condition swap it out anyway just get a new one that goes directly all the way to the pedal um, if you've got a cable in there and it's in you know pretty good condition uh, and it's coming out of your out of your tube what I recommend you do here is measure measure a hundred millimeters and then cut your cable that's fitted in your car once you've done that you can then fit um, or you can connect to these two cables together so here we have a cable that's going to should thread through here in fact want to today no it doesn't want to best thing you can do with this is just take this end off basically what you want to be doing is just threading it through there threading it through your outer sheath and then connecting your old cable with your new cable with this um, connector. So best thing you can do is just one through one side and you want you want you pretty much want it to look like this. Imagine two cables. Okay. So that you've got enough on there, but just keep it as tidy as you can, as short as you can. Um, of course. You want to get that so that it's going down your accelerator tube. Okay, let's get on to the onto the good stuff. Right, so we've got the accelerator uh, base, uh, accelerator. Sorry, the carburetor fitted. We've got um, a gasket here, a base gasket for the filter. Now, with this particular carburetor, we've already fit, fitted it with some idle jets which are a size 40 and now depending on your engine size um, we'd have also put in some jets um, this particular carburetor has got some 170 mains in it um, seems to do really quite well we've pulled the air fuel mixture screws out three full turns and then the idle uh, screw here on the side of the carburetor for this lever is out just one full turn. Obviously, it may need some adjustments. But pretty much most of the time, it's pretty. It's, it's about right. Okay. Next step. It's fitting a nice new air filter. filter you should also have another gasket so 
So fit your air filter. I mean, some of you may have different air filters if you want to fit. Um, pretty straightforward anyway. Now, what I recommend doing with these, just putting on a couple of washers. In fact, no, sorry. Reverse that. Take those off. Now we want to fit the air horns. So we've got two air horns. Drop those on. Now we can start to fit the washers. On these IDF carburetors that we supply, they don't come with an auto choke. There is a manual choke mechanism at the back. You will receive a choke cable as well. There it is, look. Put your outer sheath there, and your inner cable on there, and then just find the most suitable place. In your bus, or your bug, or your trekker, or your gear, or whatever it is that you want to fit it to. gasket is nicely fitted and there's no gaps, no air gaps, etc. Right, here we go. let's get the accelerator, sorry, the uh, air filter fitted. There we go. Tight little squeeze. Lid. Fuel pressure for these needs to be above 3 psi, these carburetors, or slightly more if necessary, uh, but that's what we've found to be ideal uh, for these. Okay, next step, so we're almost there, is fitting the distributor. So you've got your distributor clamp, just fit your distributor like you would normally. I've already marked this up. Um, Right, what's next? Distributor cap. Let's have a look at this. This funky distributor cap. There we go. The offset HT arms. Okay. So just fit it as you normally would. The other one. It's exactly the same type of fitting. To clip that in place. Now HT leads that we wrapped around the alternator earlier. Let's bring that let them through. I'll mark these up. So there we go. So remember if you're running 
a 009 distributor. Um, it's 1432. If you're running a vacuum advanced distributor, it's 1432. We do recommend the 123 ignition distributors. They are fantastic. We really like those, highly recommend them. If you haven't fitted one of those or you're just running a 009 distributor, um, you may need to be able to bend the tabs inside the distributor. There's a link on our FAQs on our webpage where you can watch a video on how to do this because you want to be ma um, maximizing your timing advance to 24 degrees. Max advance, that's 24 degrees at 3000 plus RPM. That's the maximum that you want to set your timing. So when you're running a blower kit or a supercharger or a, a turbo, they don't like advance. Giving your engine too much advance means it will get hot. If it gets hot and your timing is out, um, you could end up with uh, engine detonation and that's not uh, a good thing to happen. So just make sure that you time it properly. If you don't know what you're doing, get some advice, take it to someone who does know what you're doing because uh, this is really key to getting this right. So your timing and the mix of your jets, um, your idle jets, your emulsion tubes, your air corrector jets, etc. It's critical that you get it right and you've got somebody who knows what they're doing so that it will run well for you. Okay, so this is a 009 distributor anyway. Um, so we're gonna go for, uh, first of all, let's go number one. So one. Two. And we want the other leads. On three, four, so one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, and of course, don't forget your coil lead. This is running a um, electronic um, timing module. So you've just got the two red and black wires. So red to the positive, black to the negative. Okay, last step, I think. And that is now just to tighten down adjust the tension on the belt so I want enough tension on this so that I can just rotate it around 45 degrees that feels just perfect okay right over check everything at this point just double check that you've got all your nuts and bolts and your washers, everything are all tight. Um, belts tensioned, plugs are on properly, fuel's good. Um, one of the things that you can do now, you can hear the fuel pump prime in the carburetor. Okay, good. So you hear it stop. So that's the, that's the fuel pump that we supply uh, with the kits. Really, I do recommend those as well. There's lots of different types of fuel pumps you can buy. Um, but the, the, the fuel pump that we supply, it gets the pressure, as you've heard, and it turns itself off when it gets there. Um, with your accelerator, um, just give it two or three, four pumps, just to get some fuel into the jets so it can start to work its way through into the supercharger. And then, we'll get ready to start it. So I'm just gonna put the doors up um, and we'll give it a go. Okay, so we've got the doors up now. So put the fuel on, ignition on, squirt a bit of fuel, um, give it about four, 
pumps or so. Uh, and with these carburetors, you also remember there's a choke mechanism on the back if you want to just come and bring the camera around here. Uh, you can see the choke mechanism there, look. So you will get a choke cable in your kit for that. So you'll need to fit that. Okay. happy with that that's pretty good so again we've jetted this before it's gone out um, one of the things though you might find is that you might end up with one or two flat spots spots because every engine is different they all behave differently so just make sure you get it on the rolling road uh, and get it tuned up make sure that when you seek a rolling road specialist see if you can find one who knows their way around carburetors so for the last 40 years or so, um, we've seen fuel injection. So a lot of uh, fitters or tuners these days are used to your fuel injection type engines. The old school sort of um, carburetors like these need a little bit of kind of old school knowledge, shall we say. So um, seek the right person to help you. Although we may have jetted it for you, it is only on a theoretical basis, so if you come across a flat spot, you might need to go bigger on your jets. Your idle should be fine. You shouldn't need to change your idle jets. If anything, it will be main jets and your pump jets. But otherwise, pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. Another successful build. One last thing uh, before we go. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us just under Compressor House. Uh, you'll see lots of videos on there that we'll add. Um, there's a few more projects that we're working on at the moment uh, that we'll want to get done. So press that subscribe button. It only takes a second. It helps us and it'll help you, uh, particularly when you see more little tips and hints in the future that we can uh, hopefully help you with.